Hi. My... I just... I Doug. have a headache. Doug. <laughs> Doug. <laughs> it was not as pretty <laughs> nice. And you want me to introduce you as Corinth or Corinth? <laughs> yeah, Corinth? You know. First Corinth or second Corinth? <laughs> Welcome to the Afterthoughts Podcast Special Edition, because today Corey Miller of Corey Miller, Miller. is <laughs> Corey <laughs> Miller. Corey, is it short for Corinth? Is it short for... Second, Corinthians, se- Second Corinthians, it's for Second yeah. Corinthians, yeah, named, named after, after a whole book, se- not the first one. But the <laughs> no, second. his yeah. twin is First Corinthians. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, you have a twin brother. <laughs> I have a twin brother, and we are filming this in light of your thirty third birthday. Yes, happy birthday, Corey. And, which is also your twin brother's thirty third birthday. Yes, well, happy birthday to both of you. Well, cheers, happy birthday. Did you ever think you'd be thirty three? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was thirty two, no. Never. But now that I'm thirty three, it's 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 so obvious that I was going to turn thirty three. <laughs> You've done it, man. Makes sense now. <laughs> Uh, you mm. mentioned, because I said that you have had your driver's license longer than you haven't at 33, and you said that's actually not true for you. <laughs> yeah, it's been about a week. With the, it's Congratulations, fresh, It's man. a fresh one. So you get a new, you got a driver's license. Congratulations. Yes. What happened there? Here's what happened. Because you've been driving a car since I've known you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been really rolling the Lots dice. Lots of hours. If there's wow. any uh, police enforcement watching this or listening, sorry. Um, I, here's what happened. I, I did get a speeding ticket. Oh my gosh! And unfortunately, there's like some rule in in Denver law, I should say. <laughs> yeah. It's a law. <laughs> it's a police it's rule. It's literally been like a law. Um, and you're like for the, this type of speeding ticket, it wasn't like it was that it was like grotesquely over. It was just mm-hmm. in a certain area where I needed to go into the DMV, and I did not do that one step. I paid the ticket, and then. It, that was like 2020, I believe. Mm. Well, then COVID, pandemic, time. lockdown, Dude, the unprecedented time. S- yeah, inclement <laughs> viruses. <laughs> inclement is so good. Um, so uh, 2023, my license expired. So I went to the day on, on the day that it expired in, and I was like, I just need to re- renew. Mm-hmm. And they were like, it's been revoked for two years. <laughs> and then it took me a full calendar year to actually start the process because I had to take my written test. And my road test. So you were in, back in the car with some guy that's like oh, yeah. watching you stop and at a red light. And he was judging, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like two it years. was pretty intense. Yeah. But you passed. Here's, here's the worst first, part of that story. First time? For, the first time on the driving test, I had to take the written test twice. Well, the written test is tough. Yeah, it was, it, it was tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I can pass Most embarrassing that p- part of that story, though, is so the day before my, writ, my r- road test, mm. um, my contact flipped and it cut my eye oh and gosh. so i couldn't wear contacts but you have to prove that you can see by like standing far away and yeah. reading the letters right, right? <laughs> so the only person that i know in denver that has my same prescription is jess parsons mm-hmm. so i drove to their house mitch and jess super kind great people lent yeah. me a pair of glasses but they could not have been more feminine <laughs> So Phenomenal. I show up <laughs> like, Dude. with just out of pocket. So this guy's like, like, you look like Rita Skeeter from <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Rita Skeeter. So this there guy's mu- used is there to music like music in the background. Oh, yeah, can, yeah. You can we turn that off by chance? <laughs> <laughs> just the service is still going. That's fine. This is Corey's, Corey's music. Well, in the background. speaking of which, so you showed up with those glasses. Mm-hmm. Pass the test. I passed the test. Congratulations. Dude. I did. He actually. Uh, I got in the car and he goes, good plans? No way. And I was like, this is the only time that that is a good thing. I'm grateful to be recognized. Normally I'm like, (laughs) in the wild. Awesome. Yes. Because leading up to that moment, that guy's got to be used to 16 year olds walking in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After 16 year old, after 16 year old. And then (laughs) just this 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 guy has had his license revoked for two years. (laughs) What's he been up to? Mm -hmm. There had to be a story behind it. So you have some new songs coming out. You were just, mm-hmm. you're, you've been here in Austin. We got to hear him. I actually had the first copy of your new album. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All to bless you, Corey Miller. Congratulations, man. That's crazy. I didn't even know I made physical copies. Yeah, yes, the CD. And it's right in front of me. It's crazy. This man. is your new album. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, Spotify sent that over to us. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, called, we called the people at YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. They came down and yeah. made this for Apple us. Apple Music, Amazon Prime did this <laughs> as quick as they could. Hey, so obviously we're with Corey this weekend. Could you guys get us a hard copy, of, a hard copy? of the... <laughs> so this is your new album, but really you do have a new album. I do. Yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. Um, it's a bunch of songs that it's kind of a... 
I don't know, the last three years of what I feel like the Lord has been taking me through, learning about worship, what is it, who is it for, um, all of those lessons kind of just poured into like these really potent, for me at least, songs. Mm-hmm. There's a, it's a 13 song record, so. Kind of unlucky. I'm really proud of it. I'm really excited, you know, kind that's of unlucky. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm taking back some enemy territory. Take it back. Man. I'm just a little stitious. That's, that's just the other, <laughs> other reason why. It's on my computer. Yeah, man. Album comes out in phases of songs. That's how people do that now. Yes. Yeah. So the first song drops April 26th. Which is? It's called Sound Mind. Dude. Heard it. Very excited. I am very it. passionate you be so about excited that song. About it, man. Um, and then it's every three weeks there's a single that drops until we get to June 18th, and that's when the full album will release. Dude, that's awesome. I, I want to dive into so much of it, and I know we have, we're going to play some games and stuff, but before we even get there, say what you said about Sound Mind uh, on, on Friday in yeah. regards to faith, because I think that's so important for everyone to hear. Well, as, I, as I've been leading it um, in, in live settings, I think what what keeps coming up to me is you know I, I've been a part of writing and super love songs that are that are faith anthems that mm-hmm. that do require a little bit of faith to be like okay I can sing that with um, with integrity uh, to mean this I have to actually like stir my faith to get there um, this is not one of those songs this is this song requires no faith it requires obedience mm-hmm. um, the Lord said. I did not give you a spirit of fear. What I instead gave you was love, power, and a sound mind. And so if any piece of my life is in opposition to love, power, and sound mind, <clears throat> then at some level I am disagreeing with the word of the Lord. So I, I just mm-hmm. love this song because it, it kind of makes you get into the position of like, I'm either going to come under the word of the Lord or I'm going to be in opposition to it. And if I, if I lean into... Um, accepting the label as as anxiety or depression then i i i'm disagreeing with what he said you know so mm. the whole song is just this is what he said do you agree and if you do agree celebrate the mess Dude. out of that it's reality awesome. you know it takes all of the pressure off of our shoulders yes and puts it all on god yeah there you go and now this is this is a god thing and so i'm just going to agree with what what god says so good so important. The well whole done. album, the way you structured it, it seems is because you said that's the sound mind is the one song that's like for us like to sing mm-hmm. about our lives. Everything else is just straight worship. It's just about God. And it's really cool to me how you structured it. It seems to put so much of all of our attention and worship and praise on him. And then at the end, we get to sing that song in victory because of all of his goodness. And who yes. is that? Oh, yeah. The strategy I think, or kind of honestly, how you laid that out? I think that was on accident. Hmm. Um if I'm honest with you, how we recorded the album, like the night of worship, it made sense. I I, I knew because, well, and we'll get into all this later also, but I knew I wanted to make the first few songs to be strict high praise, uh, mainly because of you enter into his courts with thanksgiving and into his into his presence with praise, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like... I at least somewhat of a formula was in my mind to, to be like, I want to make sure that we're not, we're not needy yeah. from, the, from the get go, you know? Yeah. Um, but what ended up happening and what you just pointed out is we spent 12 songs just lavishing love on the Lord. And, mm. and he, if he inhabits praise, that means that like every song we got closer, every song mm. he inhabited more space and he was welcoming more and more and more in our hearts. And so by the end, when you get to a song like Sound Mind, after being that close for that long, it's it's this wild reality of like, oh, man, I unintentionally like by him, by, by welcoming him closer and closer, I was unintentionally allowing him closer and closer to the things that I really wanted to solve. Hmm. You know, Does that's that make cool. Sense? Yeah, it's almost like. You get to that last song there for a second. Like, oh yeah, I forgot about my life. Yeah. Like I, I was so focused on yeah. God. And how silly does it all seem now? Yeah. Because wow. he's that big. And now out of that, when I remember that he's got a life I'm living, I get to just respond to that mm-hmm. and declare the truth of what he's done for us and what he's given us. I was reading yeah. a commentary years ago about Exodus. Yeah, you 20. were Ryan. Um, <laughs> of course, he the was. Ten, ten Commandments. <laughs> I'm gonna stay in this. Cause it's gonna, <laughs> Sorry, go. Don't don't let us. We're make not fun gonna of you. derail quite yet, because <laughs> this actually is relevant 
and it was a Jewish rabbi talking about the, the Ten Commandments. And if I'm remembering correctly, he, he was saying the tenth one is you shall not covet, which is you shall not want anybody else's life. And he was saying the reason he believes it's the last one is because if you follow the other nine commandments, namely putting God first, not making mm. An, mm. an idol out of images, um, following the way of God and focusing on God, then the tenth thing that you get to do is just realize that you love being right where you're at. And I don't wow. need like anybody else's life. I don't, I don't need to be like, well, I wish I had what, what Ethan has because mm -hmm. you love where you're at so much. And so I, I feel that way about putting sound mind at the end of this album. Yeah. It's like when you do the other things, sound mind just becomes a, a sound mind just becomes the fruit of yes. worship. Yes. Dude, that's good. So great commentary. You wrote that? It's <laughs> incredible. The, uh, a, <laughs> yeah. The, it was, anyway, it was, it was, it was like so pure from you. We're like, oh yeah, you were just cool, in the dark Ryan. reading your commentary. Wow, congratulations! I was in my so prayer smart, closet dude. the other night. Uh, it was really special. Thank you for coming down here to yeah, lead bro. Yeah. our so crew. Good. And that was the second room of people that got to hear those songs. Right? Yeah, it was really special. Yeah, really, really fun night. And this whole time having you here has been really powerful. Um, we want to have some fun. Oh, yeah. Because I know that you like fun. I, I love Stop being fun. so serious, Corey. Ha have you had it? Fun? <laughs> have you had fun? It's just a few times. Okay, well, let's try <laughs> it here. No, I, I can't stress enough how much I need first. to have oh, another. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, Sometime. I haven't had this much fun in so long. <laughs> well, except <laughs> for when something really fun happened. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do some games. That's so good. Yeah. A couple questions with Kayla. We have a thing called questions with Kayla. It's everyone's favorite part. Oh, yeah. And we've never had like a jingle for it. Like oh. a little intro, and Should you, write one you right, love to, right yeah. So if you have anything that comes to mind now or throughout, okay, yeah. this is just questions this is, with Kayla. This yeah. is just like shooting from the hip here, but yeah, sure. great. Okay. Kayla's got a question. Questions with Kayla. Mm. She's gonna ask him now. Nice, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Okay. That'll be that'll be a bonus track if you listen to this CD backwards. Yeah. That's the fourteenth. I don't play that <laughs> the backwards thing. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay, Kayla. So what oh, yeah, what, to have what do you have here for us? Okay, so the other week we played a game called Who Am I, but I'm gonna flip it now. Do I need this? You give me a piece yeah, of paper. Yeah, so that's or that. pad? Okay. Now it's gonna be called Who Are You? Okay, so basically one person is gonna write down an actor, character, whoever. Mm -hmm. Okay, and whomever. You guys can't look if it's Ethan right now. <laughs> I never know. He has to close those eyes, but so this is just to keep him accountable, so yeah. he doesn't lie. So, so I just lie. write someone down. Yeah. And then, and then they, they have, have to, to ask to you guess. yes or no questions or like stuff we like that. Uh, we're going right. to we're going to kill this. Oh, yeah. dude, it's already done. <laughs> dude, it's already not yet basically. <laughs> this is inaugurated eschatology. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, you guys close your eyes so Ethan can show the camera. Right. Which camera? Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Yep, got it. All right, so you guys can now. I was about to explain who it is. Oh. In case you don't know, <laughs> I'm feeling mafia. Raise your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Heads ask up, seven up. some questions. Come on, guys, figure this out. Fiction or nonfiction? Real person, nonfiction. Uh, Odd way to answer that question. On yeah. <laughs> Alive right now? Yes. Uh, you should know by now. <laughs> Athlete? <laughs> no. Actor. Mm hmm. Actor, okay. Uh, male? Yes. Marvel? No. Harry Potter? No. Star Wars? No. Read, well, we're only going <laughs> fiction right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but we're saying like, it would be the So, like, Daniel Radcliffe would be a real person who acts yeah, yeah, in yeah, 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 it's uh, Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, okay. a living actor who is a male. <laughs> yep. Adam Sandler. <laughs> nope. Um, not too bad of, like in that world, though, categorically, not bad. Humor, comedy. Mm. Zach Galifianakis. No. Uh, move, in, in movies or shows? Has done both. Mo most prominently, though, movie. No. Show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Steve Carell. Mm -mm. Ooh, that was a that's good a guess. Good, no. Uh, is was this character in The Office? No. Was he in Parks and Rec? No. Was he in Modern Family? No. Are we close show TV show wise? No. Oh, a show <laughs> and a, oh, a live TV show, but then also some other content on the internet. 
you know, like yeah, YouTube. <laughs> uh, is he I'm also gonna... a stand-up comedian? Uh, I think has done some, but that's not what he's. That's known not what he's known for. Content it's on not YouTube. Zach Galifianakis. No, it's not very between two specific friends. to this group of people. Oh, Kyle, Kyle Mooney. Kyle Mooney. Mooney. <laughs> yes, Good. he's the godfather of all of our humor. Come on. <laughs> all right, don't look. He endorses your album. <laughs> <laughs> That's his signature. Wow. Yeah, he signed Corey's album. Go look. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. I didn't Did see, see it. it? I, I can do another one. No, I didn't see it. All right, Jacob, can you see that? Yeah. Right. Got oh, good. Okay, hide it. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Go. Ask away. Real person or fake? Fiction. <laughs> A character in something. Okay. Fake. Uh, villain? No. Movie? Protagonist. No. <laughs> supporting character? <laughs> yes. Okay. Very very much so. Mm -hmm. Okay. But a good Sam, supporting character. Sam from Lord of the Rings. No. Very supporting. Oh. That was great. Thank you so great much. Guess. Yes. Yes. Great guess. So great guess. Wow. But it was wrong. Uh, uh, in a movie. Yes. Does this person like, do you wish that they would just like talk more? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to out, they're like really quiet, like, aggressively quiet. <laughs> That's wow. how you're going to narrow this down. <laughs> What? Uh, no. Introvert or extrovert? <laughs> uh, is it in a, a movie? Six of the is, it, is it like a? Is it like in the world of fantasy yeah. fiction kind of stuff? Harry Potter? Yes. Oh, it's in yes. Harry Potter. Okay, Luna Lovegood. No. Uh, it's uh, a human. Yes. Okay. That you have to ask that. Is it a good guy? Good guy. Or girl? Is it a girl? Good guy. Misunderstood, but good guy. Snape. Snape. Sever Snape. No. Neville. Not that misunderstood. Okay, okay. <laughs> misunderstood Just, by like a very select few people. Oh, Harry Potter, I think setting. I know who it is. Neville Longbottom? No. Oh, well, that's uh, a good guess. guess. Dumbledore's brother, April 4th. No. Sirius Black? No. Harry's dad? No. Dumbledore? Who no. misunderstood? Man, yeah, that might have a, thrown you off. This is a deep cut. <laughs> it's. Is this person in all the books? In the Prisoner of Azkaban, he's, he's misunderstood. Oh, Sirius Black. No, but uh, that's the werewolf, you werewolf guy. That's also not what you think. <laughs> oh, Lu Professor Lupin. Lupin. Remus Lupin. You got to take a deeper dive. <laughs> deeper? Gosh. Like much deeper? No. Yeah, Peter okay. Pettigrew, but wasn't uh, actually come back up to the surface. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Mm. Yeah. Harry. No. Hagrid. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Corey, go. We gotta hurry up. Harry, no, <laughs> Harry, no, yeah, man. And he's sponsored mm. by Hagrid. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Go back up to the <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say <laughs> we got this. This person just not talk as much as you used to. <laughs> yes. Are they too helpful. quiet for your liking? <laughs> wow. I don't know. I, I don't if know. the answer is yes, I, I can't think of any really have a preference. That <laughs> I'm realizing I don't know how to spell this name. That's okay. okay. Perfect. Give it your best. <laughs> okay. We can sound it out. I know it's not like this, though. Okay, close your eyes. All right, let's see it. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a good one. Can we look? Yep. Okay. Fictional character? No. Real person. Good. Um, yeah, thank God. Politician? No. <laughs> Didn't think so. Person from the Bible? Nope. Athlete? Nope. Actor? Nope. Still alive? No. Author? No. Uh, could Inventor? Could have probably. Qu I have to say question mark, but no. Mm. Inventor? No, it's not he's, an inventor. He's no longer with us. Oh, Doug. <laughs> he's no longer with us, yes. by the way. He's gone, man. Yeah, he's, he's flying out of town. Male? Yes. Um, famous, Celebrity? obviously. Celebrity? Yes. Uh, famous for thoughts? <laughs> like a thought leader famous? Or hmm. for um, for like the arts? After thoughts. I would say it's for the thoughts. <laughs> the thoughts. Huberman. Many thoughts. Huberman. <laughs> Albert Einstein. Less thoughts, but uh, <laughs> but better thoughts. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Christian? <laughs> yes. Oh, theologian. Yeah. Uh, did he s <laughs> did he introduce himself by saying the first two initials of his first and middle name and then his last name? This he, makes no sense. C.S. Lewis, but he <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. A.W. No. Tozer. A.W. C.S. Lewis. G.K. Chesterton. 
Yeah. JJ Matat. No. Does this, do we, do we, could they talk more than they do? <laughs> 20th century? Music. Music person? Not a music person. What are the actual years of 20th century? Like 1900s? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of, of course, yeah, of course, of course, yes. So not like back. No. A, cr- a famous Christian. Like a social activist? No. Okay. Hard to know what they did. Okay. Uh, do we ever quote this person in sermons? Would, I'm sure you have. Would that happen? Oh, okay. yeah. Ted Lasso. Uh, <laughs> fictional. <laughs> Dang it. Oof. <laughs> we got this. We got this. We got this. Well, I, yeah, everyone I can think of has written books. Yeah. Tim Keller. Great man, but no. Gosh, I miss him. Charles Spurgeon. No, wonderful books, so. though. John Mark Comer. Nope. Okay. I'm just naming think, authors. Think, uh, oh, yeah, I think we're I'm going to give you a track. hint okay. really yeah. quick. Thank okay. you. I'm going to say Arenas. Mm. Billy Graham. That's yeah, it. bingo. Billiam Graham. Billy, yep. and I know this is not how you spell his last name. And yeah, what'd you go with? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Good job. That's where that's the name I Graham like, Crackers after him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he loved him. He loved him. Well, all three of these guys endorsed Corey's face, album. Yeah. yeah. All to bless you. Good job. Okay. Thank oh, you so God. much. Well, that was great. Great game. It's a good time. Good game. Good game. I know I that I had fun. fun. I had fun too. Well, that's good to hear. Well, that's just fantastic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just stupendous. Well, isn't that over wonderful there? for yeah, you? Oh, you were gonna you were gonna take a phone call and pretend to be someone. We're no, guess I who. would like to not do that. <laughs> can we do that? Can we do it at the end? Yeah, sure. Stay yes. to the end. Yes. To see Corey, and pretend to be someone on the phone <laughs> and find out if we can guess who it's being. <laughs> Tell us a little of your backstory, your life story. Everyone gets to hear like songs that have come out of your mm. life story, like yeah. in beautiful ways that God's just done so many things. But tell us a little bit about. Your backstory. Yeah, I um, I I have to start like right at the earliest. My mom was fifteen when she had my, me and my twin brother. Thirty three years ago, right now. Right in this in this year, <laughs> um, I had a just in, from my perspective, I just had an incredible childhood. Um, we weren't like cr- we weren't really like church people. <clears throat> But I always knew I was super loved, mm-hmm. and um, we we grew up with like pretty in a pretty like hard way. Um, you know, you have a single teenager mother trying to just twins make, make it work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I, you know, the, the part that I want to get to in the story is like I. I encountered the Lord at 16 after years of really intense, um, I would say, I would, I would say I I battled depression like all Mm. the way through growing up. And I think some of that was circumstantial. Yes. Yeah. Um, but 16 years old, my, my grandma, I had just had a praying grandma, you know, Mm. and she, she got me to this youth camp and it was one of those environments where like, I I just I I'd never seen it before. It was it was some of the most beautiful worship, and I I didn't even know that's what that was. Um, I had no context to understand, but all I could see is that people were they were free everywhere that I could look. Everyone mm-hmm. was free, and I just I, I wanted to experience that so much. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I I encountered the Lord, or I, I should say, it was the first time I became aware mm-hmm. of like, oh whoa, there's like there's someone it's not even a feeling it's like a presence and just in in one moment like gave my heart to the lord got filled with the holy spirit and looked at a worship leader and was like oh i just want to do that that's what i want to do were you already like musically invested in some way playing an uh, instrument or doing I, anything i think i enjoyed me uh, no i didn't even enjoy, no <laughs> yeah. uh, my my whole family at that point just listened i'm terribly sorry if anyone enjoys this music but it's my least favorite music, but <laughs> they just love like butt rock. <laughs> like yeah. explain butt rock. I just did it. Just did it. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. You Pearl know. Jam, yeah. Creed, Three Doors Down, Nickelback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and if uh, yeah, mm. I hate to like shame anybody, but I just if I went, <laughs> that's my whole not for life you. And never heard it. I would be fine, you know. 
So I thought I hated music, but then I, I entered into this like <laughs> worship space and I'm like, oh no, I love this. Yeah. Um, so ever since then, I've just been obsessive. Like right when I got home from, from that church camp, I, <clears throat> I just became like a worship hippie. Like every time the church mm. doors were open, I wanted to be in there. Mm. Um, I couldn't learn an instrument fast enough just to facilitate like moments with the Lord and music <sighs> that I could find at home. Um, Wow. And so, and the the crazy thing about that was at that point, my family was, they weren't saved. And so being like burning for the Lord at home and my family has no context to even start to understand mm-hmm. what, what I'm experiencing. I'm also brand new. So I'm like, I don't even know. I don't know anything. No. Um, it, I remember being like a 17 year old on fire for the Lord, could not get enough. And, you know, Family members double my age being like, so like, what do you think about free will then? <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't know. I just love them. I just, that's, that's all I got, yeah. you know? So from there, I, I, I kind of went to, I went to a Bible college in Springfield, Missouri, mm-hmm. studied music. And that's when I first started writing songs was in mm-hmm. college. And then um, worked at a church in Mississippi, loved them so much. Uh, then moved to Denver. Mm. And I've just been loving the Lord for a long time now. Yeah. So you at 16 didn't know you had musical talent. I no. That's wild. That is crazy. No, I, I know. I knew that I, when I was alone. Uh, we grew up. Uh, my my grandparents had horses, and so mm-hmm. it was. I loved going on the horse and like taking like two day little trips by myself. Oh, cool. And I would I would always sing, mm. but it was in seclusion. You know, so there was never anybody being like that is good or yeah, you got to keep like, doing that. Yikes, do some scales. There was just never, I just yeah. kept it so private. So, to be fair, I've never had anyone tell me that either. So I'll do it. Maybe, You're a very bad singer. Maybe that's, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. That's why. That's very uh, King David esque, just singing yeah. out in the fields mm. by yourself. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, songwriting yeah. and mm-hmm. being musically talented are two different things. People can play instruments. Yeah sing well but that doesn't mean they can write songs but you're very talented at that as well how did that develop Mm. in your life how did words start to form for you i think and and just to be super honest with it i i think that is still something that um that's a that's a a title or a um yeah i'll just say that's a title that i still war with um even even though i i do it so regularly now um, it's something that I'm like, I, I just got lucky or I don't know. So it's, mm. it's been a journey of like learning. I, I got really obsessed with music theory in college. And so mm. I, I just had to understand. It was like the most beautiful math to me. Mm. So what I, I guess how it started developing was um, in moments of worship, I would just start to realize like, man, there's melodies that are just like coming up out yeah. of nowhere. Um, yeah. And, you know, for... It, much to like the chagrin of people that love order, um, I I live for the moments in songs where we're like we're past the arrangement. Mm-hmm. Like what, as quick as I can get mm-hmm. past the plan, is when I feel like okay, let's run. Like what yeah. what what's happening in the room? How yeah. do I listen to Holy Spirit? What's He saying? Um, but in those moments, even from a you sixteen know, year old, I started realizing like there's something different. Um, I'm hearing things differently. I'm I'm hearing melodies. Yeah. It feels as if there's a well that exists in me that at any point I can just pull out a melody, and mm. I, it feels like a gift. And so from there, it just started becoming like, how do I how do I say what I really really like? What is my heart really trying to say? And how do I give that honest language? Um, you know, songs that I wrote in college, you would listen to now and be like, man, they're they're maybe maybe pretty melodies, but really hard to follow lyrically. Hmm. And so my journey has looked a lot like the emotion and the melody is is like what I feel the Lord has really gifted me with. Ah. And my journey to like the, the art and the craft of songwriting is like, how do I find fresh language? Yeah. And how do I do it in a way that sounds honest? <sighs> and that's been the hardest part of songwriting. That's really cool. It's something I've watched you um, 
a craft I've watched you hone for years. I think this is good language and it might be helpful for somebody watching that when it comes to creating anything, there's going to be elements of it that are natural little giftings from God, like a supernatural thing, your ability to hear melodies and pull melodies out of nowhere. But then there's other elements of it that are the craft mm -hmm. that like mm -hmm. you have to put the 10,000 hours <clears throat> yeah. into, right? Yes. Um, and, and so I, I just, I think that's really helpful to, to point that out and maybe to encourage somebody who's listening, who is trying and is like, quote unquote, failing and in their mind, it's like, no, you're not failing. You are just working yes. on getting better mm -hmm. at yes. this. Can you say a little bit just to encourage somebody about how much, how many songs, like how much work you put <laughs> into this? I'll say this. I mean, we have, um, we're about to record the next Red Rocks worship album mm -hmm. in July. And I tallied it up. We're in a heavy writing season right now because we, we know we want to wrap this up in the next few weeks. So from January 1st, to last week, mm -hmm. last Thursday, um, I've written 52 songs. Jeez. In, wow. Since January 1. And so, and that, that's a new level for me. Yeah. Um, and the reality <laughs> is, is that 52, we had three months prior of writing, and I'm not the only one writing. Mm -hmm. And so, 57 plus however many get into this folder, we're going to pick 12 of them. Right. You know what I mean? Right, like, like there's so much that will never see the light of day mm -hmm. that I still love. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So Yeah, and those other 40 whatever, like those aren't wasted. No. That's, it's all no. part of it. It's all part of the process to get to, like for you, these 13 songs that you have, like you fought for those for, yes. for so many years yeah. now and all the other writing sessions that you've had that, that didn't make it. It's not a waste. Mm -mm. That was part of the process to get you no, to where you are. No, and you know what? <laughs> just a note on that because I feel... I feel strongly about this, not just in the songwriting space, but in worship and in life and in family and in career. It's it's all the same thing is that, especially if you're making art that points to Jesus, yeah. if at any point it starts to become transactional, like I'm going to say these beautiful words to you, Lord, but at, but the motive is to get a good song then you've immediately put a dollar amount on glory. And it's like, I, well, I, I don't want to do that. I, like, I love all these songs, and they'll probably never see the light of day, but I had an encounter with the Lord in my office, and that is worth way more to me than anybody cutting the song and putting it on a record. That's it, man. And so now all these songs become like little altars that yeah. some of them I get to revisit. Some of them mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get to listen to in perpetuity online and mm -hmm. on DSPs and Spotify, all that stuff. Uh, but some of them were for a moment in time. And what a beautiful gift to be like, I'll never relive that moment. We'll never uh, go back. We'll never mm. listen again. But I meant it. Yeah. You know, like that to me is when I'm like, oof. And so I think in any in any medium, um, I think that's what I feel really passionate about mm -hmm. and why I, mm. I wrote a record. That's so dude, That's good, cool. Dude. Thank you for saying that. I want you to give a little rundown of worship because I think you're really good at explaining it. I remember when I first was actually thinking about church, like from a logical standpoint, walking into it, I did not understand it. Yeah. Why are we singing? Like, what is, <laughs> what, why is our music here? Yeah. What yeah. is this? Break down why we worship. And then you explained some things the other night about like why people raise their hands and why people mm -hmm. drop to their knees in worship. Like <clears throat> kind of the response that worship is and explain it to somebody that has no idea yeah. why Christians are doing this. Yeah, well, I mean, <clears throat> there's this is probably I, I feel I was talking to Ryan the other night. I feel like I have like dissertation level of information or volume of information yep. that at any point is just like trying to get out. So <laughs> I'm gonna try Perfect. to keep this on go, a, man, on an actual. No, that's like, what the podcast is for. Yeah, just, just go make for sure it. you leave enough time to do the phone gag. <laughs> the, the, yeah. We got to do the Who's phone gag. Who's pretending to be? <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> okay, so worship. I, I guess let's let's break it down a little bit before we before we understand it in the context of corporate church. We are all together on a Sunday morning. I think to get to what I believe is a healthy place of understanding for that word, you have to go backwards and, and you have to look at biblically what is worship. What, is, what does the Lord say worship is? Mm -hmm. And um, the first time that worship, the word worship is used is actually the story of Abraham mm. and Isaac. Mm. 
worship was the first time Jeez. that it's mentioned is him going to sacrifice what min- what matters most to him. Mm-hmm. For Abraham to take his son, who he prayed for and was so special to him, up the mountain and to offer something to the Lord that he could never replace. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you, you go throughout Scripture, there, there's... In Romans, it says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, mm-hmm. holy and pleasing to the Lord. This is your spiritual act of worship. Um, we have, unfortunately, in the current church era, we have we have um, neutered this word to mean music. Mm-hmm. And it is not like, yes, I, I worship the Lord in music, but my breath and how I treat you and how I think about people and how I treat people and how I behave when no one's watching. And that is worship. My life surrendered to the Lord is how I worship. And so I think you have to start there because um, what what ends up happening is because worship music, the genre, has so much emotion, and, and it should. We're talking about like the most powerful source of love that exists. Um, because worship music has so much emotion, um, what ends up happening is that worship starts to be understood as an emotional jukebox machine of like, I'm feeling sad. Worship will make me feel happy. So boop, Mm. boop, boop. If they play my favorite song, if they do it Mm. loud enough, but not too loud, Mm -hmm. if my favorite worship leader sings it, equals I get happy. Yeah. when at the end of the day, if we don't start off understanding that worship was always costly sacrifice, hmm. that's what moves the heart of God, then we 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 go into worship thinking like, what what am I about what am I about to get out of this? Mm-hmm. Like how mm-hmm. am I benefiting from this? Yeah. Like, oh, I'll I'll maybe raise my hands if I get my breakthrough. Um hmm. When at the end of the day, worship is a response to seeing who the Lord is and being convinced and that He's so good that I cannot help but just like love Him. And sure, in a in a corporate setting, I do understand when people walk in, our church on purpose is a front porch for prodigals. Um, people are not going to understand why are we singing. And there's like shame <clears throat> off of anyone who doesn't get it at all. Shame off. Um, but I, I, I feel such a deep, deep, weight and purpose on the earth to remind the church, hey, worship. Sometimes I, I want to be in the middle of a song, like stop everything and be like, hey, I love you. And did you know you're half of the equation between us and the Lord? But did you know that this is not for you? Mm-hmm. You know, like this isn't for you. Yeah. You're going to benefit because you're going to get close to him. Yeah. Um, but this is worship corporately. Our time together is is our opportunity to say you you raised me up from like what's that scripture like you raised me up from the miry clay and put my feet upon a rock yeah. mm-hmm. you know like the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run to it and they are saved like all of these things have become true and i have recognized them as truth and worship is my response to celebrate your goodness therefore it has to be about you and it has to it has to be for you it has to be an offering to you you know mm. So I think when, when it comes to somebody walking into the church, um, what is worship? It can sometimes appear to be like a weird emotional karaoke event. Mm. <laughs> um, mm. and, and what I would say is like, hey, just look at Jesus. Yeah. And he, he I, we say this a lot to our teams. It's like, I, he's just so much better at introducing himself than I am about telling you about him. He just, he's the best Mm. at wooing us he knows how to do it so just look his direction once you see him like your heart will have to respond yep. it'll have mm. to want to love him mm. you know um and then your other question was sorry well keep going on that one thing for people on a cliffhanger that maybe haven't heard the story of abraham he doesn't end up having to sacrifice his oh son, that's important and a beautiful part of that story that god <laughs> provides a substitute right, right. Yeah. but his act of obedience is a beautiful <laughs> act of worship um, <laughs> Thank you. Foreshadows the the cross. So, why did music become a a primary form mm. that we call worship? Yeah. Um, well, it it has 
it has been all throughout scripture. Um, it's kind of really cool to see, actually. Um, Old Testament, let's go. Um, I'm sure there are older examples of this, but um, Old Testament, you have um, these tribes that belong to the Lord. They're all the nation of Israel, but there are these tribes. And there's one tribe, um, they were called the Levites. And Levites were the priests. They did everything, every single job down to twining rope for the tent um, was unto the Lord. Their job was mm-hmm. to bless the presence of the Lord, to protect the Ark of the Covenant, to to host and bless the presence of God. Um, and so, you know, Old Testament, when the Israelites went out to war, he sent the, he sent the Levites out on the front line and, um, to prepare the way for the rest of the army of God. And and here, this is like a little side note, but it's really fascinating to me that he put the worshipers in the front mm. of the army before the spears, before the swords, before the horses. He sent them out. And I also love that the scripture says that, like, welcome, like, like o- open up you gates, let the king of glory enter in. Um, who gets to go to like who gets to ascend the mountain of God? Those with clean hands, pure hearts. Who gets to ascend the mountain of God? Those, like, the people that that get access to the Lord are those who welcome Him with praise. Like He yeah. inhabits praise, yeah. and so He intentionally put the worship leaders, mm-hmm. like the the band, the yeah. like the lyre, the trumpet, all that, the drums, all that stuff. He put that in front of the army. They welcomed in the King of Glory, and because the King of Glory was welcomed in. Mm then this army has now hmm. like Yahweh yeah. on their side. And yeah. so Old Testament, there were hmm. music was used um, in battle. There's another reference um, when the Israelites are fleeing Egypt during the Exodus. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they cross over because the Lord parts the sea. And once they make it to the other side of the sea, um, it, says, it says there's this really cool moment, Miriam, is a character, and was she Moses' sister? sister. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Um, Miriam gets super, super moved by the fact that that they saw the Lord perform a miracle and save them, that it says that she walked up in front of everybody and led worship. And this is interesting, and I think it has to do with what else, the other things you, you brought up, but it's the word that was used. It says that she got up with tambourine, Mm and she praised the Lord. But that that word praise is Tehillah, which further breaks down to she let out a new song. She she led spontaneous worship wow. in front of the people of God, and it, and it caused worship to break out among the people of yeah. God. Yeah. New Testament, you have like, hey, don't forget the gathering of one another. Like they, they gathered in their homes in Acts. They gathered in their homes and uh, sang spiritual songs and and hymns together. Yeah. Like it's it's been used mm-hmm. to welcome in the presence for mm-hmm. for the the whole human journey with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it just wasn't in Genesis, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was like a song that yeah. Adam and Eve got to sing to the Lord in their yeah. walks in the cool of yeah. day. You know, like yeah. it's just something that He gave us that yeah. seems yeah. to be easier access. Which is kind of crazy to think about, like who is the first, like how did people first discover like a different form of communication through music? Mm-hmm. Like how did that, yeah. I don't, I don't Some know. say when Adam woke up from his nap. Do you know the answer? Nap, <laughs> you know how that <laughs> when Adam woke up from his nap and saw Eve, you see it, it oh, the, yeah. the text goes into poetry. Pros. No way. So some scholars would say that he burst into song mm-hmm. when he when he sees his. Wow, his I love wife, that. That's so cool. dope. But that's the first. That's cool. That's the earliest I I see, and it, it's yeah. yeah, it's music has this uncanny ability to like navigate around the the watchful walls that that we yeah. put up. For me, especially as somebody who lives in my mind, yeah, it is the greatest gift mm-hmm. and tool to to help me sink into. Yeah my body and, and worship God with all, like offer my whole yes. being to God, not just God, I'm going to think really hard about how good you are right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Cause that's yeah. a comfortable place for me and, yeah. it's, and that's great. Yeah. But it's such a good uh, thing for me to, to do because it brings like all, I want to bring all of me. Yes. Before yeah. God. Yeah. Man. I remember hearing a guy teaching about when the spirit was hovering in the creation moment. That's actually, a, that's a sound word. Mm-hmm. In Hebrew, I don't remember the word, but that it was eliciting that there was a song to a sound to creation. It's the wings flapping, right? And then they they have taken DNA of animals and humans and somehow transposed it into music. 
And the whole thing was about like, you're actually a song to God. Like he yes. hears you mm. in who you are by the way he created you, that uh -huh. he created you as a song, which is really, really cool. When it comes to like raising your hands yeah. in worship, like responding through music, yeah. mm -hmm. explain that. You explained some of it the other night. I thought was really helpful. Yeah. And, and so there's, there's a lot of information behind this. Um, I don't, I don't like house all of it, but the things that have stuck with me are, um, it's, it's really f can be summed up in this word praise. Um, praise, unfortunately, is translated to modern church life as fast song. Ah. You know, yeah, the yeah. Up, the opener, like yeah. what a bummer. That's one of the keys <laughs> to unlock the presence of the Lord. Yeah. yeah and like yeah. an enemy attack on that word to make it like so dumbed down. So mm. funny. Uh, to like, oh, tempo. Is yeah. that what you mean? 85 beats <laughs> or higher. I'm like, no. <laughs> um, the word praise mm. um, used like just take the Psalms, just the Psalms. Yeah. The word praise. You have like praise the Lord. Bless the Lord on my soul. Bless the Lord. Don't forget his benefits. Like, like all, all these times that the word praise is used, um, there are actually different words that are used for that, that we, that English translation has substituted the word praise for. Mm -hmm. The first one and the most, the most used one, it's used about 80% of the time is a word called it's uh, Hebrew. It's halal. Yeah. And, Halal. It's actually where we get the word hallelujah from. Mm -hmm. So halal, ya, halal, praise, ya, short for Yahweh. Nice. So praise the Lord. Halal, if you break that word down, means to clamorously, foolishly lose all your dignity. Mm -hmm. Who cares what you look like? Mm -hmm. You just have to just lose it. It's what David did when mm -hmm. the ark came into yeah, his yeah. hometown. Yeah. Uh, he halaled. He danced at a level that made other people go like, somebody get the like, King, that's King be doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, oof, we're going to get there because praise is so powerful, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so David did this. He, he halaled. He praised. Fascinating to me that 80% of the time that praise, that halal is used, means if it's used 80% of the time, like that's eighty percent of the mm. of the word of God saying like mm. lose your dignity wow. like who cares yeah. wow. you know just respond to him. Um, I want to come back to that David story because there's something so great about that. I'll write it down. Yeah. Mark it. We yeah, will yeah. forget. That's good. Um, another another word that we have substituted praise for is um, yada, mm. and yada means to lift your hand. And this one is like lift your hand and surrender to the Lord, like a fa like a child to father. Like pick me up, mm -hmm. like yeah. I need you. I need you now more than ever. Like um, there's another. I don't remember the exact Hebrew word, but there's another word um, that means to lift your hands, but it's a, with a different heart posture. It's it's not I need you. I need you. I need you. It is lift your hands like like sending an arrow over enemy territory mm. that the Lord has promised, but you haven't received yet. It's a prophetic act of looking at like, I feel attacked in my life. I feel like I'm broken, but I'm going to lift my hands as if I'm sending arrows over that territory and claiming it with like a prophetic mm. act right uh, now. It's dope. Um, there's yeah, another one. That. There's another one called Barak, which means to like fall to your knees. Um, it's what Mary did at Bethany. Um, when she was anointing mm. him for for crucifixion and burial, mm. um, she she barak she praised the Lord by falling to her knees and using her tears to wipe his to mm. wash his feet and her hair. It's it's again it's another like it's probably the most emotive form of the yeah. word of praise. Um, so all mm. that said, when people come into church and they they're like, I'm not gonna raise my hands. I'm not gonna do that. That's too emotional. That's too. I don't get that. I don't understand that. What I want to say is, again, without any shame or any manipulation, yeah. what I want to say is that is the preference of the Lord for corporate worship. Mm. He told us what it looks like, mm -hmm. and it looks like raising your hands. It looks like falling to your knees. Mm. It looks like maybe tapping into your emotions. Dude. Um, that, so so often, I, I feel like we play it off as a emotive response to what God is doing, and it, it can absolutely be that. 
but reframing it as an act of obedience. Yes. I think maybe super helpful yeah. for some people who are like, well, I don't really like feel it. I'm not a worship person. Yeah. It's oh, like, yeah. well, God tells you to be so. He, you, and you know he, what? You are. He made you. <laughs> he made you. He yeah. literally made yeah. you that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is this is nuts. This is this is another thing that I feel. This like, might be a new good idea. I take notes and then I have thoughts to no, come dude. back to. After no, no, no. thoughts, never write it down. I finally understand the title of our podcast. <laughs> Corey, we need you here. <laughs> By the way, you're the only person that's ever yeah, called dude. in on our podcast. You've done it like three times. No way. Two, three times. <laughs> yeah, we need to get that going. I'll make a note of that too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Keep going. Um, and then the, the last shot of the every, every episode is just Ethan's afterthoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is written down. Like yeah. all the notes, yeah. the chicken scratch. Well, it finally makes sense. No, Keep I going. Have better handwriting than Ryan. It's not That's great. I uh, write like an adult. Did. You I did great. Caps. Caps lock on. Corey, keep going. <laughs> okay, this is so helpful. There is something that I feel I feel like I want to come to war against, and it is this. It's that. It's a hundred percent in my mind. It's a hundred percent a planned, intentional attack from the enemy mm. on worship. And that it is in our culture, it's starting to be like treated like a feminine thing. Hmm. Good. And I want to come against that with mm. everything in me because I know of a king that was known for leading warriors, was known for cutting the head off of Goliath, was known for being titled as it said David's mighty men, men of valor. Like they, they were strong. They were, you don't screw around with mighty men yeah. of David. Yeah. He, he was a warrior. Saul killed his thousands, but David, his tens and thousands. Like he, he knew how to handle business mm -hmm. on yeah. a battlefield, yeah. but he would never have been called a man after God's own heart. Had he not been able to be man enough Mm. to step into his emotions and say, yes, I will obey and I will lift my hands. I will play my instrument. I will write poetry. Mm. And so, so when good. I when I see like this, like um, this, there's like this verbiage and this like kind of, it feels like direct attack on worship of like, yeah, that's just too feminine for me. I'm like, no, you need to man up. You, ac you actually yeah. need to step into who you actually are in your good. character good. and how God created you to be. And that mm. is being a man of God. Yeah. Dang. So I just feel That's I feel good. very I passionately it. about yeah. that. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it. David was out in the fields writing these love songs about God while killing a lion. Yes. Yeah. And a at bear. Yeah, like the and same bear. night. <laughs> yeah. Like in he's between. Like, he's like, like I'm going to go write a song. <laughs> I'm going to write a song about yeah, this. He got Psalm 23 like, in there in between. Don't think he had No, no, he did. Oh, sorry, guys. I've got an alarm going off. I'll put it on the put it on your chart. With <laughs> oh wait, check. Okay, <laughs> let me ask another question. Hit. Another, another question, bro. Boys. So important. I love people that. ask: Is God narcissistic? Because he wants to be worshipped. He asks for us to make mm. much of him. Is this a narcissistic God that we're talking about? I have a response to that. That I think it's just such an interesting question to yeah. people that look at God and they're like, "Why would we need to come sing about you?" Mm. What do you say to that? Good. What do you say to that? I want to hear. Well. I, I, you go. Okay. Here's what I would say to that. Um, is God narcissistic? Absolutely not. Narciss narcissism, like the motive of narcissism is I need to be higher so that you are lower. Mm. Mm. The Lord is, he doesn't need us to lift him up. Like he just is up. He, he is as high as you get. The Lord, I think it's, it's his like great, protection for us mm -hmm. to say like hey if you put me at the top like seek first the kingdom and and then all these things get added to you like he he has a way of um he has a way of using every one of our stories to say like ah oh, man i i if you can just put me first not because i need it for my own like fragile ego, ego yeah. Like, if you can just put me first, you're covered. You're actually covered. You come right. under me. Mm. And if you come under me, nothing touches you. Yeah. Mm. And so to me, I'm like, man, that's not narcissism. That's like, that. that is an absolute gift to be able mm. to be covered by by mm. someone who cannot be defeated. You mm. know? I, I'd love to hear y'all's yeah. thoughts. Yeah, I think that's so good. I think narcissist is a word we've had to invent because of the fallen human nature. So that word wasn't even a concept in the Trinity for eternity past, mm. right? And and so at some level, mm. we have to, as the question askers, we have to acknowledge that we're copy and pasting our own experience onto yeah. what we think God is like. 
which is never a great place to start with mm. God. Um, so in the same way that like if Zeke brought you a, a gift that he made in school mm. and it's like a, a picture frame with made out of sticks and, and, and you were like, dude, I have like thousands of dollars in my <laughs> bank account. I can make so many of these. Dude, I, don't, I have hundreds of dollars. <laughs> I don't need this. I have this. dozens of I've, dollars, dude. I have dozens of cents to my name. Fives of dollars. <laughs> right? <laughs> we would all be like, okay. Wait, yeah. what, what's the, of course, like the heart of the father is, I cannot believe yeah. that this kid would take time to, to put this together for me. I'm, I'm going to treasure this picture frame with every everything mm. that I, I have in me. And so to me, the worship is not um, something that he needs. It's something that he just enjoys and is mm-hmm. worthy of. Mm. And there is a way that, that he created all of this to work, and it works so much better mm. when we first put him at the center mm. and and worship is is yeah our our response to to that truth so yeah. that's, that's what i would say what's yeah. yours um i think the for me the concept comes down to understanding holiness and glory mm. and if you understand those two things you understand that god is the only entity that is that that yes. deserves that yep. so it's actually his goodness to show us i'm the only thing that can hold your worship and yeah. should hold your worship because if you put it on anything else it's going to lower you it's yeah. going to diminish Oof. the life i have for you so it's actually his knowledge of his glory that only he can understand that calls us to worship wow because like yeah. you said it calls us up to him mm-hmm. versus pushing us down and i also don't think you could ever make the case for a narcissistic god who put flesh on and was crucified yeah. by people he invented oh, yeah. so 100 percent. but but people ask that question about worship because it seems like oh we have to sing songs about this guy like who does he think he is it's like He's the only one that you should sing songs about. Yeah. The only we say worthy a lot yeah. in worship songs. He's the only one worthy of it. Yeah. If you worship anything else, yep. it is it is less than. It is not worthy of your worship. So it's actually a compliment to us, mm. I think. Yes. When he calls us to worship to say, Hey, I want you to put your attention and your focus on the one place that it should be. Yes. Yeah. And it's gonna pull you towards me. So Yes. Um Okay, check Gosh, out. We so can talk about that. Is, we yeah. we really could. Because my you know what, my mind my mind, I'm sorry. Is, is, yeah, are keep we going. going too long? No, no, no. Yeah, Dude, it's been yeah, 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, it's been a long time. We're doing great. <laughs> you guys are okay? Keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep oh. going. My, my mind just goes to this. Um, it's, it's, I think what I see the Lord doing in very many spheres right now is what, certainly what he's doing in, in me is like, Lord, I'm asking for a fresh like dose of fear of the Lord. Like I, it is the beginning of wisdom, and if I and if I see you appropriately, then that actually reveals to me to see myself appropriately. Mm-hmm. Like if I actually see you, yeah. if I worship you, I get close, and then when I get close, I actually get to see myself and be like, yeah. "Oh, in relation to how great you are, you've you've put greatness. You like you you built me with greatness. You t- yeah. you fear and trembling mm-hmm. to do this. Yeah, and so I I man I." I think fear of the Lord is so important right now mm-hmm. for yeah. the church. Dude. It, it will like it will keep us. Yeah. It is the beginning of understanding and wisdom. We need it so bad. Woof. In yeah. a world that is void of fear of anything, really. Yeah. Like yeah. that is so fearful in one sense, afraid of everything, but doesn't want to actually live in the healthy fear of anything yes. and wants to make much of ourselves. But that's what God understands. That's why we should worship, why we should live as sacrifices is because the best thing for you is God. The best thing for Mm -hmm. you is the presence of God. And so when you live that way, that's what you get. And that's why Mm. he designed us that way. And there's an attack on that. What a great line. I had the fear of the Lord is the start of wisdom, the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. Like it literally requires humility to get even get into the party yes. and start even learning it. That's how you end up yeah. with fear. I remember, yeah. a, I remember really a friend of ours saying, like, the the <laughs> devil's goal is to get you to worship anything other than Jesus. Like uh, yeah. anything. I think honestly, when people are like, I'm gonna worship the devil, he's like, Really? Okay. Like wasn't like, expecting that. Crazy. It's pretty dark, but <laughs> not as pretty <laughs> dark. Even the devil's like a little weirded out. He's like, oh, okay, but uh, but he just oh, wants to get your eyes off of yeah. worshiping the one yeah. place you should worship. Yes. Yes. And we live in a world that is grabbing at attention to worship anything and everything else because you're always worshiping something. And that's yes. my God's not yes. a narcissist. He goes, I know that my good. that humans are always going to worship something. Yeah. Mm. So I'm gonna give them the one healthy thing. Yeah. To right. to um, there's put that attention to it's it. A, it's a, I think it's Psalm 136. It's something. It's in that area, mm. but it says, 
uh, it, it draws the con- like the distinction between like those who love the Lord. This is this is what they live like, and then it says those who serve, those who worship idols become become like what they have made. And it says idols can idols have eyes, but they cannot see. Idols have mouths, but they cannot speak. And those who worship those idols will be just like what they have made, dead and powerless. Like that is scripture. That's what it says. And without fear of the Lord, then you start worshiping these like. Things like a, Dude. My, a record. If I started worshiping my record, like who, yeah. who gives a rip yeah. about yeah. it? It is yeah. dead and powerless without the like the and the power of the Holy Spirit, and like God being welcomed as like rightly on a throne. That's it, know? man. Dude, that's, Everything we that's make. That's powerful. A sermon, my book. What is it? It's it's words on a page. Right? Yeah. Like who yes. cares? And, and at a much deeper level, it's this beautiful like result of something God's done through me. Yeah. Like this is for you. Yes. But we have to get that order right yes. because it's so easy to yeah. put the thing back up on the pedestal. Yeah. Well, and, and the, as soon as you do, it just destroys you. The air we breathe now is the worship of self. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Everything you hear about in our age yeah. right now is self. And if it's you root that truth. back, my, yeah. If you root that back, that's yeah. the origin of sin. Yeah, yeah. Genesis and look at Woof. what we became yeah. as we began to worship ourselves, which is what the it enemy tempted well. us it, into. It went pretty well, right? <laughs> yeah, we're about to get <laughs> taken over by robots, so it's <laughs> going good. Really AI good job. Is by literally going to get us. Well, I, this is why I love your songs. Yes, because they truly bring us to just worship Him and Him mm-hmm. alone, mm-hmm. and and give Him all the praise and all the glory and all the honor with like the power of those words, not just like I'm singing Christian karaoke, but like. Yeah. I'm going to the depth of his presence mm-hmm. and I'm just going to just worship him. And if something happens as a byproduct in my life, cool. Great. Yes. But I just want to go worship him because he's so worthy of it. And that's, that is to me, like, I think what I see in you wanting to shake people that are kind of like I was standing in church, kind of like, what in the world is this mm-hmm. it's with these Christian weirdos? Yeah. It's like, oh, but the best thing you could do right now is just lose your dignity and worship God because yeah. it's going to change your life yes. in every single yeah. way. And you'll live your life like that in other facets, not just musically when you're standing in church. So thank you yeah, for bro, these songs. Yeah, thank you for giving me the first copy of this album, wow. <laughs> uh, which is endorsed by Kyle Mooney, Billy, Billy Graham, Graham, and Hagrid. It's, <laughs> it's quite a lineup. Rated dude. and reviewed. Yeah, Interesting Hagrid's. trio that... <laughs> Weirdly uh, enough, they're all worshipers. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the these are my mighty men right here. <laughs> <laughs> these are them. Okay, last question for you. Yeah. You get to go lead worship in a lot of different places, uh, mostly around this country. Mm-hmm. Um what do you see like happening in the church? What do you see mm. God wanting from us? Good. What's your your call to the church, your call to worshipers as we move into mm. the next years to come? I think the first thing, I mean, it's a little heavy, so sorry about it. Um, the, the Lord's like cleaning his house. It, the, he's just cleaning mm. right now. And some of it is very public and some of it is not very public. Um, but... Um, there, Matthew chapter seven. It's like probably one of the like scariest yeah. things to read, um, and thank the Lord for the fear of the Lord. But um, I think it's the Message translation. It says, "Lord, Lord, look all these things that we did. Um, look at our." It says, "Look at this God-sponsored project." It had everybody talking, dude. And the <laughs> Lord says, "You have Gene. to go because we we never met each other." Mm. <laughs> And I think what the Lord is doing is like Mm. the one thing that Jesus lost his temper, if you want to use that, the one thing that Jesus lost his temper, temple, what? Temper about. (laughs) (laughs) Got it. Um, The one thing was when people exchanged making a house of the Lord into profit, into their Mm. own gain. Mm. And, Mm. um, And he called it a den of thieves. Like they were stealing from the Lord. And I think one of the things that I'm like, I I feel like the Lord in always in kindness that leads us into repentance. But I think what the Lord is doing is I think he's like, hey, if I don't step in as father and and course correct this, if I don't reveal that hidden sin, if I don't actually pull the mat up and and clean it up right now, Um, it's actually it, you're creating like black mold in in the house, and you're you're getting so many people sick right now. And so I th- I think what I see the Lord doing is actually like to those that are hungry for the Lord, He's like He's wooing them with fear of the Lord, mm-hmm. uh, it, like He's protecting them by by saying mm-hmm. like, Hey, come and be in awe of me, be enamored by me, mm-hmm. let me be my, let me be your everything. 
And to those that their hearts have, have, have said no for so long, he's like, okay, you, you actually, you actually need to skin your knee a little bit here. Mm. Like, mm. like you, you, you need it. Mm. You need it bad. Cause you, you mm. need to say, sorry, you need to turn around. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've, I'm seeing that a lot yeah. in, in so many different spheres. Um, and as far as like what I feel like he's doing for the foreseeable future, like I know I sound like the kook. I know I sound like the crazy guy, but I just feel like Jesus is coming back so soon. Mm. Um, he said that in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit out and you're going to prophesy and you're going to dream dreams and you're going to see visions. And I just believe him. I just mm. believe that's what's happening. Mm. And so um, I'm, I'm asking the Lord for me and for my church and for my my community, like Lord, give us dreams, give us visions, yeah. um, pour out your Spirit. I like I I, I want to prophesy. I, I want to I want to lay hands on people and see them healed. And I, I I want to be someone that lives so close to you that I get to see heaven like rend and pour out onto the earth mm-hmm. in Denver and in Austin mm-hmm. and in Brussels and. In, everywhere i just i i just want to be a part of it you know yeah. mm-hmm. so i i feel like that's what the lord is doing right yeah. now dude that's awesome that was so let's good. go really well i, said, I was talking to a guy today about the end times and is jesus coming back in that kind of conversation and the conclusion of it we were both like i mean maybe yeah. and either way i think every generation we've kind of like joked about every generation has thought that mm-hmm. probably so every generation would live like it mm-hmm. yeah and that's what we're supposed to do yeah. is live with that kind of urgency and love for the world yeah. and desire to pull people in to worship the one being that they should, yeah. the one place they should be in worship of him and seeing him and watching him move. And so you, I believe, are helping yeah. people to live yeah. like it, mm. live like like in our lives, like time is not guaranteed. Like, you mm-hmm. know, you're missed. Yeah. So live like it and yes. make the most of him with your life and do it. And yeah. I think you are gifted in such a unique way to help people to do that. So thank you, thank you. for sharing yeah, really. that. I'm thankful that yeah. at 16, you became aware of the gift that started to become aware of the yeah, gift man. that God gave you because it has impacted so many people, thank including you. us. Wow. And I'll just say to the integrity of what you say that with, you have let God clean your house mm. yeah. in so many ways in your life. You have let him into every piece of you yeah. and refine you and rebuild you and shape you. And so your songs are from a place of authenticity. I think some people look at like Christian people that are known for whatever they're they're gifted in. It's like, yeah, yeah but yeah. what's really like? Yeah. What are they really like? And I've just watched you let God just clean you yeah, and man. move in you and do so many things. And you've been so humble <laughs> mm-hmm. in that process, so surrendered to let Him make you into the man that He wants you to be, and one that just wow. gives glory to Him. And you do it yeah. in such a beautiful way. So thank you for thank that. You. True, absolutely. Man. And we're just. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You want to say anything else? You you go ahead. You're well, in a role, man. I was going to end with the gag. This so. is it. <laughs> if you're going to say something serious. No, let's do the gag and then I'll say something serious. Oh, okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I No, man. I'm sh- I think it's all, it's all been said. I'm so proud of you. This Thanks, this man. album. I think somebody, that, somebody said. That specific album, right? Somebody this, said. This uh, CD. <laughs> uh, the other day, they're like, oh, yeah, Corey's new CD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think, I don't remember who. Yeah, but, right um, Show it to the <laughs> All to bless you, Corey Miller. Dude, this is. It is a gift to the church. It's a gift to me. And I've watched you fight for every line and every melody. Mm. And um, I just, I can't wait, man. I cannot wait for, to, I can't wait to see the fruit that comes of it because the fruit is just pointing people back to God. And so it's really, it's really brilliant, man. And thank I'm you. very proud of you. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. With that said, can you pretend to be someone now for the people? Here we uh, go, guys. Yeah. Those yeah. of you who waited 75 minutes <laughs> for this. Bring on the gag. Okay. Bring it on. This, yes. is, our, this is our closer. Yeah, Who yeah. I am. Okay. Is that the same name as the game we played, though? It's uh, fine. Same but different. It's not, okay. It's not same but different. You ready? <laughs> yes. Hi. My, I just I have a headache. Doug. <laughs> Doug. <laughs> I knew it. I have a headache. <laughs> Oh, Doug. <laughs> great, great I lo- job, I love man. You, Doug. In memory I love of Doug. Doug. <laughs> All right. Okay, final promotion. Corey's first song, April 26th. Share you. it. Ryan's book, Tuesdays. <laughs> every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, every Tuesday, every Tuesday, Tuesday comes out. It's out. <laughs> Excited for both you guys. Love you both so much. Thank Thanks. you for coming to hang with us Thanks this weekend. Me. And thank you for jumping on Afterthoughts to give some amazing yes. thoughts on it. worship. We love you. 
And uh, share this with somebody else. This was really insightful on worship, yeah. especially I think for people that need a better picture than the way that we view it a lot of the time. So share this, like it, subscribe, all that good stuff. And come back soon. Or you can call back in. You're this is kind of I'll the Corey in. phone. It's like yeah, Batman, yeah. but only Corey answers. <laughs> so we'll just do that. Peace. <laughs>